Welcome. Welcome to this English lesson. There is a worksheet for this video which you can download from here. I'm going to march through this fairly quickly, so feel free to stop the video at any time you need to. It won't kill the excitement, I promise you. Uh, in this lesson, uh, we learn about one of the many interesting aspects of outdoor life in Central Europe, and something that survived the dark old days of Soviet communism, which collapsed like a house of cards at the end of 1989. Let our journey begin. You can see the line marking a path starting in Vienna, the capital of Austria, which was never part of the Soviet bloc, by the way, leading to Prague, the capital of the Czech Republic, or Czechia, as the country is starting to be known. The journey takes you through such beautiful historic places as Telch and Mikulov. Looks like a fairy tale, doesn't it? There are many such beautiful historic places in Czechia, and there are many such paths running through the country as we are about to see. Czech people love to walk, and there are walking trails everywhere. Czechs, in my experience at least, also like order and structure. So it never surprised me that there, of all places, a very systematic network of marked trails developed. Not only through forests, but across towns and cities as well, all over the country. Now, like all good systems, color coding is key. Red for difficult trails, blue for significant trails, green and yellow for people like me. When you're out and about, you see these colour-coded markings everywhere. It's pretty hard to get lost, especially if you're following a map as well. And there is no shortage of maps. With Czechia being one of the most wired places in the world, it's hardly surprising that the paper maps we love to spread out on the ground also have their digital versions. There is a version for foreigners called windy or windy maps. What do you think? Windy like the wind blowing or windy like not straight? The trail winds around the hills or through the forest. I vote for not straight. Windy. Like all good ideas, colour coding trails have spread far beyond the Czech borders, and often with the help of Czech people. Nearly identical systems exist in the neighbouring countries of Austria and Poland. The Czech hiking markers standard is now an international system of hiking markers for tourist trails and is used in more countries than any competing system. So now it's time for you to listen to a short text and answer some questions. Got your pen and paper ready? Or your digital equivalent? Here are the questions. Since when? The whole country? How many kilometres of trails? Are the trails only for walking? Is it the longest system in the world today? Here is the text. The system has been used by the Czech Hiking Club since 1888. The entire territory of the Czech Republic is covered with marked trails and detailed maps are published and widely available. In the Czech Republic, over 70,000 kilometres of hiking trails have been marked in this way. Of these, 39,816 kilometres of hiking trails were marked in 2008. An additional 31,104 kilometres of cycling trails 387 kilometres of skiing trails and 1,300 kilometres of horse riding trails are also marked. In 1938, it was the longest system in the world, but now it is the densest. Here is the text you just listened to. You can pause the video and check your answers if you like. I hope you like the colour coding. We are now going to look at a short text about these walking trails, but it doesn't look like a text yet. Here is a word cloud made up of some of the words in the text. Do you know why some are bigger than others? Do you know what the colours indicate? You can pause and have a think about these questions. The word cloud is made in a little program called Versatext, and it uses size to indicate frequency. 
This means that Versatex makes the words which the author used a lot bigger than the words she used less often. You can also get a pretty good idea of what the text is about, can't you? Well, we've already been talking about the topic, so we have a pretty good idea anyway. And the parts of speech are color-coded. When you make a word cloud in Versatext, you can even choose which parts of speech to show. For this word cloud, I chose only four parts of speech. Do you want to pause the video and figure out which ones? The meaning of the text, any text, doesn't just come from words. Very important are the combinations of words. Can you find any pairs of words here that you would expect to go together in the text? Sometimes you get pairs of words that make compound nouns, and others which create phrases. Sometimes you find a verb, a noun, or an adjective and a noun that collocate. There are many possibilities. You can pause again and make a list of what you find. Now, one thing that is always worth checking is the pronunciation of key words. We are going to study the word stress of some of the words in the word cloud. If you downloaded the worksheet, use that. Otherwise, you can draw a syllable stress table in your notebook and write some of the words from the word cloud into it. For example, tourist is a two-syllable word and the stress is on the first syllable, so write it in 2.1. Professional has four syllables and is stressed on the second so write it in 4.2. Here are some of the words that you can write into the table. Say the words out loud and count the syllables. Then listen for which one is stressed. You can pause the video while you write these words into the table. Then on the next slide you'll see the answers. Here you go. How did you do? Pause the video again and check your answers. You probably got them all right, didn't you? But if you didn't, you know which words you now need to focus on. The important thing is that before you start working with the text, you are confident of the key words pronunciation. It's very important. Another very important thing we need to know about keywords is how they are used. As the big words in the word cloud revealed, Keywords are used multiple times in a text. And here they are. When you click on a word in a Versatext word cloud, it produces a concordance, which is what you can see here. This is all the uses of the word in the text. So if you want to know what the text is saying about a key word, this is the best way to find out. And if you want to learn how to use a word, you can see the words and phrases that surround it. This is called co-text. What are the words in the text that have some sort of relationship with trail? If you printed out the worksheet, you can highlight the words. Use colours that represent parts of speech. You can use any colours you like. The colours here are the ones that Versatext uses for parts of speech. And you can link the words. And when we take the text away, we are left with this amazing constellation. We can see that the adjectives are attributive, coming before the noun, on the left. We can see that trail is the subject of these verbs. What do the trails do? An area is in square brackets because there are many areas mentioned. Country, Czech Republic. Remember that this is all the uses of the word trail in the whole text. Now, if you're wondering what this constellation looks like at night, turn the lights out. Is it not a thing of beauty? You can even read these units aloud. Complex systems of marked trails cover the whole country. Professional walking trails connected together. Pause the video and read some more. You can do this with any of the keywords that appear in the word cloud. 
but you will probably choose the words that you most want to know about and those that occur often enough in the text. And now it's time for the full text. While we read it, we're going to highlight words that belong to the text topic trails. And you'll see just what a topic trail is as we do this. There are words in the text to do with walking. They are pink. There are words in the text to do with history. They are green. There are words in the text to do with the organization. They are blue. There are words in the text to do with the trails. They are yellow. So, by saying what topic trail the words belong to, you've really focused on the key ideas of the text. And your colors beautifully show how topics weave through the text. Just as trails wind their ways through countries, topic trails weave through texts. This happens in pretty much every text in the world. You can see more examples of topic trails in various texts here. And now what? Well, we can write the words as lists. Each list sort of summarizes what the text says about that aspect of its story. If you wanted to, you could now write a few sentences for each trail. The walking topic trail has the same few words repeated many times in the text, but doesn't look very interesting when listed. But repetition of key words in a text is an interesting and important feature of texts generally. By the time you've done these various tasks, you have learned some important things about the language of the text, about how language in text works, and of course, you've learned the content of the text. Check Walking Trails is just one of the 20 texts already available for you to play with in Versatext. But the main idea is for you to work with the text that you are studying at the moment. You can paste it into the text field and then you can study its language in the ways that we have seen so far. And there are other options as well. So that brings us to the end of our wander through these ways of working with texts. Let's look at what we've done. We introduced the topic of walking trails through maps and photos and discussion. Then there was a short listening comprehension. We met the text through a word cloud. Then we put some of those words into a syllable stress table. We looked at the words from the text that are related to some keywords using concordances. We made a constellation of these related words. We read the text while marking the words that make up its topic trails. And finally, we put the words into lists and wrote some sentences about the text topics. From here, there are many follow-up activities you could do. Personally, I'd recommend finding a few friends and taking them along a walking trail. Red, blue, green or yellow. Take lots of photos and make your own video or photo album with descriptions that you can share. Don't forget to plan what you'll take and to study the windy maps. You might remember that the map at the beginning marked the trail from Vienna to Prague. And here we are. Now it's not true that all Czech walking trails lead to Prague, nor away from Prague. But what better place to end up, and what better place to end this lesson? If you are interested in learning and teaching language in colourful, stimulating, creative and original ways, I can think of nothing better than the versatile blank book. Check it out. I'm checking out now, going to do a bit of serious study before I put my hiking boots on. Bye bye.